Hey guys, Sober O'Neill of Gene Day Reviews here with another special servant spotlight featuring David. As always, we'll be examining his skills and his stats, along with a few pointers on how to utilize him effectively and an overall grade, comparing him to the other three star servants. This, along with Uriel and the Hector spotlights, mark our first ever dedicated servant spotlights for the three star servants, and those other two spotlights are going to be up on the channel right now, as well as linked in the description below. So please check those out after you finish watching this one. And now let's take a look at David's stats. When it comes to HP, David has the lowest HP among all three star archers at 8,643. And in fact, he's at the very low end for HP among all three stars in general. But he makes up for it by having not only the highest attack among all the archers, but the second highest attack among all three stars with 7,736. Only Lubu himself has a higher attack among the three star servants. So let's take a look at his skills. His first skill is Divine Protection Rank A, which increases defense for one turn by 50% and restores between 1000 to 2000 HP depending on level. His second skill is Harp of Healing Rank B, which removes mental debuffs from all allies. It applies Evade for one time to all allies and it restores between 300 and 800 HP for all allies, depending on level. Finally, he has Charisma Rank B, which increases the attack of all allies for three turns between 9 to 18%, again, depending on level. Moving on to his passives, he has Independent Action Rank A, which increases crit strength by 10%, and Magic Resistance Rank A, which increases debuff resist by 20%. Taking a look at his command cards and Noble Phantasm, he has a strange semi-arts themed deck. It's a quick buster arts 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 deck with a buster noble phantasm, not unlike Emia. His noble phantasm is Hamesh Avenim, which pierces through evade and deals significant damage to a single enemy between 600 to 1000 percent depending on level, and it has a high chance to inflict skill seal between 100 and 200 percent depending on overcharge. So the first thing you should notice about David is his second skill, and yes, it is as strong as it looks. This skill plays a huge factor in David's utility as a support servant. Notice that the evade he applies to everyone lasts one time, not one turn, meaning it's a guaranteed evade. And that means if someone has the evade and they're not targeted for five turns by an enemy, they still have the evade and it doesn't go away until an enemy hits them. This is a much stronger form of evade than the usual evades that only last for one turn, simply because it removes the risk of using an evade only to not be targeted by any of the enemies, which I'm sure everyone has experienced before. On top of that, it also provides a very minor team heal and removes mental debuffs like charm, which on their own aren't very good, but when it comes attached to a team-wide evade, those are very nice add-ons. His Harp of Healing is without a doubt his best skill and probably one of the best skills in the game, but you shouldn't overlook the very strong defense buff and heal he gets from Divine Protection either, because combined with Harp of Healing, it can make David a very tanky servant. His Charisma is also really decent and adds a strong offensive dimension to his support abilities. All his skills are good, but I strongly recommend maxing Harp of Healing first to reduce the cooldown on the Evade followed by Charisma and then Divine Protection. Having a servant that can both keep everyone alive and also empower them is the most valuable thing you can have in the game. That's what makes Waver and Hans and Tamamo so incredible. And while David is not quite at their level, his strength as a support is still top tier. On top of that, his Noble Phantasm is very strong, being a single target buster that pierces through evade and it can inflict skill seal, means it's pretty useful against any servant that loves to spam evade. Unfortunately though, he isn't without his issues. His passive skills aren't anywhere near as useful as his active ones since he doesn't have anything like a star absorb or extra crit damage to make use of that crit damage passive. But more importantly, his deck is absolutely atrocious. Like Emiya, David has a severely mismatched deck with three arts cards but a buster noble phantasm, meaning he can't bust a brave chain. But unlike Emiya, he has yet to be given any strengthening quests to somewhat mitigate the imbalance. It really feels like the developers were torn between making him a full support with an arts deck or a strong offensive boss killer with a single target buster noble phantasm, and in reality that hampers him a bit. 
a balanced arts arts buster buster quick deck would have made him much better since he would then have the potential to still charge his noble phantasm with his arts cards while also being able to bust a brave chain on a very powerful noble phantasm as it is his deck is pretty inconsistent and he unnecessarily floods a buster team with arts cards when paired with another support like waiver but also he can't pump out consistent damage when being used offensively because he has too many arts cards it may not seem like much but trust me you're gonna notice it eventually when you get a couple of bad hands every now and again thankfully his strong support skills more than make up for his inconsistent command cards he's still an invaluable support that can be added to pretty much any team much like waver and hans and he especially excels when he's paired up with offensive servants like gil or herc or kentoki or lu bu since he can keep them alive with harp of healing while also buffing them with charisma he's strong in arts teams as well when paired with offensive arts servants he can buff like robin hood media vlad and especially nero since he can make her even more immortal as for craft essences his bond craft essence is really strong Ark of the Covenant bolsters his Noble Phantasm strength by 30%, which helps it a lot considering how strong it is, but it also adds a 10% chance to inflict death every time you attack. Now, the death chance is extremely small, and will absolutely never work on a servant enemy, but it does add a nice bit of lore and flavor to his character, and it does occasionally trigger against certain enemies, and when it does, it's very satisfying. But personally, I think Heaven's Feel and Black Grail work even better if you have them. He has more than enough healing ability to sustain the damage from Black Grail, and it can really make his Noble Phantasm hit like a truck. But if you're going for the full stall setup and you really want to abuse his survivability, then you should either go with Nightless Rose or Moon Goddess's Bath, since the Guts and HP regen respectively will keep him alive for an extremely long period of time. Overall, David has a reputation for being an amazing archer, and he is. Alongside Uriel, he is the best among 3-star archers, and is easily capable of being considered a 4-star, given he can outperform most of them. He's also one of the best supports, thanks to his ability to keep the team alive with his heals and evade, while pumping up everyone's damage with charisma. In that regard, I put him right below Waver and Hans as the best support out right now. But unlike them, despite being very support oriented he can still dish out a lot of damage with his noble phantasm seriously do not underestimate the amount of damage he can put out his only drawback is a very bad deck but his pros more than make up for that and for that reason he gets an a plus from me and everyone should be rolling that friend point gotcha for him on release those are my thoughts on david in my opinion okiamidus has blessed us with two great archers so do not sleep on the friend point gotcha this time around also, if you haven't already, please check out the spotlights for the two other 3-star servants releasing with Okeanos, Uriel, and Hector. Links to those videos are in the description below. And let me know who you think the best Okeanos archer is in the comments below. On Tuesday, I'll be putting up spotlights for the two new 4-star servants. And on release day, Drake's spotlight will be going up, so I'll look forward to those videos. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next spotlight.